Good evening and welcome to Let's Talk Shop with Russ. I am glad we got to have the show tonight. Uh, one of the reasons is because we've had some hellacious thunderstorms just come around me. So I thought we were going to lose power and maybe internet and everything. But so far, good, so good. Keep your fingers crossed and maybe they will hold on tonight and let us have a good show. Uh, tonight's show, we're just basically going to do a roundhouse. Some of us, uh, I know Ken's got a new lathe, and I got a couple of new tools. So uh, uh, I think Al's going to talk about his uh, 3D printer. And uh, so that basically, that's all it is for tonight. Uh, the person that I had scheduled um, had to end up canceling. And it's it was the same person last week. They have had a, um, a death in the family. And um, it's just too quick for them. And I understand that. I totally understand. So I hope they are doing much better. Them and their family are doing much better. And I really don't want to say anything unless they gave me permission. So we'll just let it go at that. But glad to be back tonight. Uh, last week, uh, me and my, my two sons, myself and one of their friends were, uh, worked on the roof all day Saturday from like eight thirty nine o'clock that morning to like five or six o'clock that afternoon. And so with uh, the person canceling and I was just, let me tell you, I'm actually almost glad they canceled, not for the reason they canceled because my butt was about that far up off the ground. Matter of fact, I think my son had to get a wheelbarrow to help me inside the house once. Uh, <laughs> I was, I mean, I was war slap out, let me tell you, but we had a good day. We got a lot accomplished. I'm one more step closer to having everything finished. And and I know some of you are going like, why is it taking so long? First off, because we're doing it ourselves. I had damage that structural damage that had to re be repaired. And so I'm going back with a metal roof. It's a much better, it's like, it's supposed to be a 50 year roof. I'm 59 years old. Hell, I won't be, I won't live to 109. So it'll be the last roof I'll ever need on my house. So I'm going back with a metal roof and the, the prices they wanted were just so way far out there that I'm like, nah. I mean, I only uh, they wanted the cheapest price I got was over ten thousand dollars. I only paid thirty eight hundred dollars for the metal for my roof, and I realize you got to make a profit, guys. But anyway, we won't go into that. But I'm one step closer. We ain't got that much more left to do, and I'll have the whole roof done, and for a heck of a lot cheaper than what I was going to have to pay to have it done. So. I appreciate all y'all being out there tonight. Tom Spillane, uh, Neil, is that Shafto? Shafto? S A F T O. I don't have my glasses on. Becky's Texas Woodshop, uh, Driveway Woodshop with Jim Bashirs. Yeah, Jim Bashirs, he's on the chat on his phone. He said that uh, they didn't have good enough, um, where he was at, they didn't have good enough internet for him to be on the show tonight. But uh, James Parker, Tom Spillane, all y'all are out there, Inspired Woodworks in the chat. I appreciate y'all being out there so very much, and I'll try to keep an out there for you. If you have any questions for us tonight, for those of us who are on the panel, um, just let me know. Hopefully, it will one of us on the panel, or I will see it and be able to bring it up. Oh, one of the things I know uh, that somebody had asked, and several people had asked, including Katie, was about Tommy G from Tommy G's Workshop. Uh, he finally was gotten a hold of and, and what's going on in his life is he's actually recovered enough from he, for those of you who do not know, Tommy G was involved in a very nasty, uh, auto accident and his, um, SUV had a rollover, it rolled over several times and it really messed him up for a while. He wasn't even able to work. Well, what's happened is he's finally got good enough to go back to work and they've kept him out of town. So the only time he gets to come home was on the weekends and he's spending the time with his family when he comes home on the weekends. So that's the reason he hasn't been active on Facebook or anywhere around that we can't get a hold of him. But he, other than that, he's okay. Everything's fine. And from what I'm my understanding, he was supposed to try either this week or next week and get back on FB and um, Facebook and say that uh, he's okay. So for those of you who have asked, we did get a hold of him and I found out what was going on. And so, that's what it is. And I'm very happy. I was worried about him because I knew he was going through a lot or little, a lot of pain when he, um, in that auto accident. So I was w quite worried about him for, uh, Hey, was that thunder? I just heard a second ago. Yeah. 
Oh yeah, it it was it's horrible. Yeah, it's it's still storming around here. That's why I'm keeping my fingers crossed that we'll have a um, be able to complete the show. I do have one announcement for tonight, and that is Whirly Gig Wars. Okay, Whirly Gig Wars is going to run from July first to July thirty first of this year. So, uh, j- actually, it's the same time every year. It has been. Uh, it used to run from like July 1st when Laney had it to like July 10th or uh, the first week or so, but I've extended it for the whole month. So that is going to be here. It's just around the corner. I'm already working with sponsors and working with uh, companies for uh, prizes. The web page is already up. I just don't have anything put, uh, have it opened up yet to the public. I'll probably put that open sometime this week and hopefully we'll get some great prizes, uh, to give away. And, um, and do whirly gig wars. So I'm looking, anticipating. I've had a lot of people already contact me about whirly gig wars, and uh, I'm hoping that it'll be a good success this year. And uh, and don't forget too, uh, right after whirly gig wars, and the month of July and August is the pallet challenge. So we'll be starting that up right after the whirly gig wars. But uh, and and people don't understand about the whirly gig wars is the scroll saw is probably the best tool of all for those of you who scroll saw to make a whirly gig. Most of the, I, I'm, I left, the, I was in there. Uh, my wife was talking about whirly gig. We were doing the whirly gig and I left it in the houses tonight, but I was going to bring it out here and show you all the one that I made of a little man fishing, but uh, I'll show it next week, next Saturday. Cause we'll talk about it again, but uh, it's set up great because whirly gig requires a lot of little small parts and intricate parts especially if you want to put a lot of motion, a lot of things into it. So the scroll saw is probably the best tool to use to make a whirly gig. So, but just to let everybody know that the whirly gig wars is coming July 1st through the 30, 31st of this year, 2018. So you only got a week before it starts. Uh, other than that, just my sponsors, the Vobel technologies for web design development, hosting, Visit devobal.com, FastCap, innovative products for the professional woodworker. Go to FastCap.com. Rockler, 60 years in woodworking, create with confidence. Visit Rockler.com. Bearwood Supply Company, your best choice for hard-to-find woodworking supplies. Go to Bearwood.com. Clingspore, the sanding specialist, woodworkingshop.com. And Seiko, the scroll saw specialist, Seiko.com. So that is all I have to say. Let's go down the, we'll go through the introductions first, and then we'll go to um, uh, let everybody talk about their tools. So let's start on my left. And uh, <laughs> Brenda has a new hair tonight. How you doing, Brenda? <laughs> Good evening, Russ. <laughs> I thought I better hold the sign up there so you'd, you'd know my name. <laughs> I, I, you know, I, I swear, I swear, I thought about this, and I'm still going to do it, and I haven't done it. I'm, you know how they have the little, your little yellow sticky things, or what do you call post its? Uh huh. I'm going to put a post it. I haven't done it. I already <laughs> thought about this on the corner of my screen up here, and then I'm going to put on there. Her name is Brenda. <laughs> so Thank you. Remember to read it. Yeah, so I can see it before I get to you. Oh, bless your heart. Well, for anybody else out there that don't know who I am, I'm Brenda G of Brenda G's Designs. I'm on Twitter, Instagram, Patreon, Etsy, Twitch, YouTube, Google+, LinkedIn, Pinterest, and most recently, Reddit. I'm Brenda G's Designs every place you look, so I'm pretty easy to find. Cool. And now, I did want to mention something since you were on there, because I know you have a friend and you're on his uh, show every once in a while. And uh, and we'll just and he mentioned us. uh, Let's talk shop with Russ the other day. And that is his name is uh, Green Bay Wacky, right? That's correct. Yes, yeah. Green Bay Wacky. He he is an uh, uh, icon, I think, in the YouTube world. But then, you know, maybe I'm overrating him. <laughs> he's a good friend of mine. He's a comedian and he does some very good YouTube shows. He uh, does uh, a lot of comedy. He does a lot of support for the YouTube community, helps people learn how to improve their channels and uh, helps learn how to support each other in the YouTube community. So uh, I I strongly urge everybody, if you are not subscribed to Green Bay Wacky, you should go and subscribe to him and support him. 
Yes. And um, I met him through Brenda and uh, stumbled across his channel and uh, had watched him a few times. Now, it's not a cup of tea for everybody, okay? <laughs> the guy doesn't have a structured show, so to speak. Like, he's not talking about woodworking. He's not talking about making. Uh, so he's just on there and he wears some crazy hats sometimes and stuff. <laughs> You'll get a good laugh, trust me. But he does talk about uh, some really great things. And the thing about it was that impressed me is I, wa I was watching him about a week or two ago, I guess it was, when he mentioned us. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 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 And what he said was he um, said, I was watching a show and he goes, you know, the other night, uh, I know Brenda's on this guy's panel, but I can't remember his name. He says, but they talked about glue. For a whole hour, they talked about wood glue. And he goes, I couldn't believe that you could talk about glue for an hour. And he goes, the thing about it was I watched the whole hour. It was very interesting. And so, I was, <laughs> so I was like, oh, yeah, that's pretty. that was pretty funny. So uh, if you get a chance, go check him out. It's Like I said, it may not be your cup of tea, but you can at least go over there and give him a try and give him a like and a like him. But his name is uh, it's Green Bay Wacky here on YouTube. So That's correct. Yeah. I just I had to do that because, like I said, I thought it was pretty cool that he watched the show on glue and thought it was interesting that we could do that. <laughs> All right, Mr. Chris, Chris Ahern. There we go. All right. Hey, guys, Chris here from the Old Cranky Workshop. Um, find me on Facebook, YouTube, and believe it or not, I know I keep saying this, but I got a video coming. I just have to finish the editing. <laughs> but cool. Someday I'll get to sit down and do it. Oh, I've got several videos I've been supposed to do, and I haven't got around to them. But it's funny. You know, doing the video and building a project is the easy part. It's the time-consuming part is the editing. Yeah, it is. So, uh, so it's all on the SD card. I just got to put the pieces together. Chris, when you're really crappy at it like I am, it doesn't take long at all. <laughs> yeah, we, we've kind of learned to accept you all, so we'll, we'll deal with that. <laughs> <laughs> Next is Katie. How you doing, Katie? You're on mute. Uh, there you go. There you I go. Got I got it. I got it going now. Uh, my name's Katie, and I'm still on Facebook. Uh, I tried to run away, and, and I was threatened. But uh, <laughs> <laughs> and that's about it. And, everybody, and, and everybody's grateful that that is it. Yeah, so. we are grateful you're here. I love you, sweetheart. I mean, I have such a. You have such an awesome, awesome humor and uh, thing about you that is just so fantastic. First off, you speak what your the truth. You speak your thoughts, so to speak, which is not bad. Don't get me wrong, uh, but it, it's, sometimes they are. They're pretty bad. Well, I know, but it's refreshing sometimes because you get so many people that just sit there and you know they talk behind your back. They don't talk to your face, so to speak. So no, I, I'm not gonna. Yeah. I'm not but uh, and what we're talking about is she got kind of frustrated because some of the stuff was going on on Facebook. And I think a lot of us out there, a lot of us, including a lot of us on the panel are that same way, is there's so much bull crap going on about politics and this garbage that's going on. And I don't want even going to get into it. I don't mm -hmm. want to say that one side's right or the other side's right. My point is there's so much bull crap going on, so much mudslinging that people can't even get along to get this crap done and get it over with and go on. And it just sometimes gets so frustrating that you, and I, I trust me, I've thought the same way she is. I'm just so sick and tired of seeing this crap. I go on Facebook to talk to my friends, to yeah. talk to people I haven't seen in a long time. To talk Share to pictures people. of pretty girls. <laughs> like Ann. <laughs> yeah, some pictures of pretty girls. So, but yeah, 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 it's, it's not good. yeah, so it just gets so frustrating when you're trying to t go through the channel your or your page to see what your friends are doing. I've got a lot of firefighter friends that worked with me here in uh, Florida for 20 something years. We worked together, but they've moved. Some of them live in Kentucky. One of them lives in Kentucky. One of them lives in Georgia. We got, I got another one that lives in Texas that moved out of state once they retired. And some, this is one of the only ways I can keep in, and see what they're doing. They're very good friends of mine. So, and when you get this, all this bull crap of this political garbage and it, some of it is so 
made up. It's so stupid that he, he, people would even post this crap. Are you really that gullible to believe this? That it's just like uh -huh. you get so frustrating. You know, I have, hey, my friends list has went down a lot because every time somebody that especially posts some of that really bull crap stuff, I just click, click, click. They're out of here. I don't want to yeah, see. Them. Yeah, I've, del I've deleted a few over time. Uh, yeah. You know, just, and, uh, and some, well, one recent deletion, it wasn't even political. It was just stupid stuff. Uh, uh, you know, woo, uh, uh, something that, w that, that had no factual base to it at all. Uh, and I just, you know, yeah, and they wouldn't take the time to look it up on Snopes, yeah, or, or PolitiFact, or any place that might have, uh, you know, uh, a shot at telling the truth about it, and uh, right. Oh, I I totally agree with you, I, and I, that's why I said I don't want to get off of get in this. No. I don't want this show to get off into that bull crap. But I just, but I feel the same way you do. And and she got blown up on her page with people. Oh, I did, I did. I did. I think uh, uh, Donald's uh, uh, roommate Jackie said she'd whip your or who was it said she was. It was Holly butt. Denny that said she'd whip my butt. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> she she, she didn't butt. say it that politely. <laughs> and yeah, she didn't say but too. She said hey, no, yes, she, yes. no, she wasn't that polite about it. Yeah, she <laughs> said, so all right. Uh Matt, how you doing, Matt? I am fabulous, Russ. Thanks for having me on. Matt Haas That's from Awesome Wood favorite. Things. And um yeah, you can find me on Facebook under Awesome Wood Things, YouTube on Awesome Wood Things, and a few other places. Um yeah, I have a new lathe to me it's a um used one so i'll be talking about that later and russ i put on two roofs in my day shingled two roofs it was shortly after high school funny thing my buddy says to me matt we just completed these two jobs why don't we go into business together i ran the calculations we could probably earn eight dollars an hour and i was like no way. I was like, I'm going into computer programming. See you bye. <laughs> I am never going to do that ever again. It was such hard work. Oh, it kicked my butt. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, it, it is. You. It's not easy work. Back in 2004, when my construction company was going full blow, full bore, um, there were so many houses with damage that, uh, Normally, you have to have you know, here in Florida, in our area, you have to have a uh, roofer's license, so to speak. It doesn't make sense that I'm a general contractor and build houses, but yet I can't actually put the roof on a house I built. <laughs> I never understood that. It's like I got to have, you know, I mean, I can't put the AC in. You have to have a licensed AC. You have to have a licensed electrician. You have to have a licensed plumber. I'm like the supervisor of all these guys. Anyway, to make a long story short, back in 2004, when we had like three or four hurricanes back to back to back here in Florida, there were so many roofs that needed to be fixed. They actually said, if you are a general contractor, you don't need to, you can pull the permit yourself. You can and do roofs. So uh, I hired on a roofing crew and got a big dump trailer. And we, I don't remember how we were doing. Oh, oh couple of roofs a week we did that wow. for a long time yeah it's now, relatively I, simple i mean in concept put down the felt put on the shingle you know yeah it's not too, it's not too no it's not rocket science it's not hard my point was though but i didn't climb my butt up on that roof <laughs> <laughs> i had guys doing it for me but i'm actually climbing my butt up there to do this roof and it ain't fun trust me well, more power to you we want uh, some video yeah we it want those video. big sheets of uh metal yeah they're 38 waiting, for, waiting for, for a good wind to come along. <laughs> there are 38 inches. The pieces we're putting up are 38 inches wide, and then whatever you need length, they'll cut them. The longest pieces that went over my back porch and over the house were 23 foot 6 inches. So that's pretty. That's a pretty long, long piece. We were, uh, and there were uh, 20, 22 of them that just went over that edge of the back porch in the house that we put on. So yeah, there were some long pieces. All right. So, Oh, I was just going to say something real quick uh, before we got to Ken was, uh, yeah. Green Bay wacky is out actually out in the, uh, 
in the chat. So hi guy. Hey, green Bay wackies out there. Uh, we were just talking about you at the beginning of the uh, show. So if you want to go back and do the replay on the uh, show after it's over with, uh, we're just talking about you. So glad to see you out there in the chat. I appreciate you being out there and maybe sometime in the uh, future, if you're interested, uh, we'll have you on the uh, panel one night and just talk some craziness and, uh, talk about the YouTube channels in general and stuff, get into a conversation. I know that I watched your show the other night where you were, uh, helping people out with their channels and, uh, telling them how to make their channels a little bit better. So maybe we could do something like that on, uh, on this show one night. So anyway, off to, uh, Ken. Oh, Hey Russ. Thanks for having me on. Hey, my name is, uh, Ken. I'm from moon pie creations. You can find me on YouTube or on Facebook. Uh, you can find me on uh, Instagram or on Twitter also. Thanks, Russ. Cool. Ow. Got to find that button. Yeah. Uh, Al Forte. <laughs> you got to find Odessa that button. Woodworking, uh, and Maker Shop, Odessa Woodworking on Facebook. And Odessa Woodworking and Maker Shop on YouTube. Kilroy79763 on Twitch. Um, got a stream over there. Friday, Saturday, and Sunday at 2 p.m. And uh, uh, you can find me any, everywhere. Kilroy is everywhere, right? Kilroy 7976. He's everywhere. Live long, live long and prosper. Green Bay Wacky says, I can talk shop. Ha ha, I fix things. <laughs> cool. Uh, Mr. Russ, Russ Meadows. Hey, guys. Uh, Russ Meadows from the uh, Rusty Nails Wood Shop on Facebook and Instagram and just a smidgen of YouTube. And uh, I'm glad to see uh, Ken Moon back in his shop. He's pointed the camera at the clean part like he said he would. And uh, as far as uh, – is that Debbie on the end or is that still Brenda? No, nah, it's Brenda. Okay, I'm digging the long hair, baby. I really like it. <laughs> thanks for having me <laughs> you're welcome oh, digging the long hair yeah yeah and that's another thing that green bay gets in uh he wears some of uh Larry, i'm sorry but he wears some weird stuff on his show sometimes so he had like a, a bear hat on uh, you know a bear like a kid bear hat or what i will you'll have to go there and watch it that's all i gotta say you just have to go there and see it for yourself but uh a really great guy though i enjoyed watching him uh, the few times that i've watched him and everything so all right so um let's go down oh ken's got uh a new lathe uh so he's very very happy and excited about that um russ did, meadows do you have anything you want to talk about as far as new tools that you have I don't have any new tools. I just had that one up project that I finished up. Uh, other than that, that's about it. Uh, um, you have it with you? It's in the other room. I can go get it. All right, go get it, and we'll show it off in a second. We'll go to Al next, then, and you go right. get that and bring it back, and we'll come back. Al, I know you have a 3D printer. Yes. Yes, I do. Um, I've been uh, pulling my hair out, adjusting it, tweaking it, um, that's that's the printer there. Uh, I'm assuming you're you're seeing it. I can't remember at what stage that is, but um, I've been working on um, taking over the world, and uh, I, I figured I'd do it like Skynet did. And what I decided to do is uh, build a. Uh, uh, oh, I lost the. Uh, I hope I, yeah, I didn't close it out good. Build a Terminator arm. And the Terminator arm is a T5 arm. I don't know if you remember, but I've, I've kind of gotten some fingers done, okay? You know, and uh, um, let me share my screen so I can show a couple of a couple of different um, web pages to give you a better idea. Uh, I think I'm going to mess this up. Maybe not. That's actually it printing right now. I always have it printing. It's like printing 24-7. Um, and uh, I really need to switch to this page, which Russ is on, and it's going to probably blow you guys away. Oh, we see Russ. Hey, Russ, how you doing? <clears throat> so 
this is the printer that I ended up getting. I, I looked around and I got a really sweet deal on it. And uh, it's, it's really been a lot of fun, a lot of learning, a uh, lot of learning. Um, the uh, Terminator arm is, is like this, and it's just like the Terminator arm that got destroyed basically in, in the movie uh, Terminator. Uh, from the uh, ironically, I think it's a T5 uh, Terminator also, just the same as the T5 uh, Folger Tech printer that I got. The arm has got a bunch of different pieces, like you can see here. I mean, there's there's tons of different things. I've gotten I've gotten most of them printed, but it's taking forever, forever. I, I wanted to show this little video of of the actual part that I'm working on, and I'm just going to animate it here and show you. Um, so this is the thumb that that I'm building, and I'll bring it back here for a second. And I had to print all these little pieces, and then of course get them to come together. And it's been it's been fun. Let's put it that, this way: it's it's been lots of fun. So that thumb right there, as soon as it finishes building, and I'll get off of it here in a second. Is, is what I'm is what I'm building every single one of those pieces have to get built now I might be able to use you know there's all the fingers and stuff I might be able to use uh, bolts and nuts and stuff to, to make it work but for right now I'm just concentrating on getting the pieces back and let me see if I can uh, your screen sharing let's stop screen sharing yeah there's Russ um, so so that's that's what I'm currently working on right now and that's that's my new toy and as you can see there's there's lots of parts lots of parts that i've been building like i said i've been pulling my hair out some but but it's kind of giving me a uh, the knowledge to to keep it going because it you just just don't throw it in the corner and it prints you have to make sure that all the tensions are right that all the adjustments are right that the that the height of the of the print nozzle to the to the bed is 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 right um you know, even the temperatures, uh, if you have a draft going through there. But anyway, that's my new tool, basically, in the shop. And I'm having a blast. I'm having a blast. I recommend it for anyone that wants to try it. Yeah, I'm, I, yeah, I'm wanting to get one, too. And uh, just wanted to bring this up. Uh, Green Bay Wacky just gave uh, $10 out there in the Super Chat. So cool. thank you very much. I appreciate that. Wow, yeah, 10 bucks in my Super Chat. So. That's a pretty good chunk of change. That'll buy, buy some stuff right there. So anyway, uh, yeah, it, it was. It, Brenda said, told him, he said, thank you. It was nice of you. And it was very nice of you. Thank you very much. I really appreciate that. Um, uh, James Parker, I think. So, so it was $10 for me. He says, sweet, wanted always a 3D printer or or I don't get that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he's giving it to me for uh, me to buy a 3D printer, not you. You already got one. But uh, James Parker, I think, said something about did uh, Russ, did your wife find a place for her birdhouse? Yeah, on her desk, her work desk, where everything else goes. <laughs> All the stuff I made her is right on top of her desk, right in front of her. She has a big desk, corner desk. So it's, it's there. Um, haven't seen any other questions out there. Uh, Dennis Godson's back out or with us tonight. Uh, Tom Spillane, Bob Lee is out there, and I, he's been traveling around a little bit, so I know he's better. He was sick for a while, and, and uh, but now he's traveling around, so it's good to see you out. And um, that, Dennis was back. asking Al where he got it. I don't know if he meant the printer or the pattern. Uh, where did you get it, Dennis Godson? Okay, yeah, go ahead and explain where you got the pattern and the printer. So. Okay, yeah, the the printer. I, I go up to the Fab Lab at the college I work at, and which is like a makerspace. Uh, in fact, I've streamed some some CNC. They got a big four by eight CNC. I love it. I love it. But all sorts of tools and stuff. They've got like seven different printers up there. But anyway, there was a guy building a printer up at the Fab Lab, and he already had four or five other ones, and his wife was getting ready to to. Uh, uh, do some bodily damage to him, you know, beat him about the head and, and shoulders with, with, uh, with probably, you know, a Terminator hand. Right. Um, but, uh, uh, he got me interested. And then he says, uh, see this one here, this one here is 179 and it was a little, I can't remember what it was a little ender three, I think is what it was, which really the point of me mentioning the price is that you can get in the free printing for under 200 bucks, probably easily anywhere. Um, but he says, 
But he says, I'll sell you that one over there. And basically for the same price, um, which is bigger, it's got a, a 12 by 12 uh, bed on it by 15. So I can actually print a big piece. But that's where that's where I got it. And there's actually a place on the web called Thingiverse, which is those photos that I was showing you and stuff. Uh, Thingiverse has got all sorts of 3D uh, STL files of, of the drawings, basically. I've also been working in, in Fusion 360 to make my own, and I've made a couple of them, not, not anything spectacular and stuff. So you can get all these things to print for free all over the place, and there's probably more than just one place, but Thingiverse is, is where, where, where you get it. Uh, I'd be more than happy if anybody wants to, to chat, just drop me a line and I'll chat or maybe point you to the different printers. I mean, I'm not an expert in any way, shape, or form. Uh, I'm a noob. But uh, guys, it's it's been it's been a blast. Cool. Hope that um, yeah, I was just going to point out that um, maybe back up for a second. Uh, where's she at? Uh, Becky's Texas Woodshop said that she is getting uh, a, a lathe from Harbor Freight. Now I got news for you, Becky. That's awesome. First off, that you're getting a lathe and getting into that because. Um, that's fantastic. Uh, just to let you know that I know a lot of people think like some of the tools at Harbor Freight aren't that great. That Harbor Freight, both of their little one and their bigger one, the Harbor Freight lathe, is actually a very, very good lathe to start with. It's reasonably priced, and it's basically the same lathe as uh, Risley has, and uh, there's another place that has a lathe that is almost identical to the Harbor Freight lathe. So I don't know if you're getting the big one or the small one. Oh, the 18 ones, you're getting the smaller one. Okay. But it's still a good lathe. I mean, so you'll yeah, have a lot. With you there, Russ. Do what? My first lathe was that first, that was that Harbor Freight. I went through three of them, pulling them back and forth to my shop. One of them caught fire. <laughs> I broke all my tools and all that. Now, the bench top one, I've, I've known a lot of people who have those. Those things are great. That big one, I'd just go ahead and, and buy a Grizzly if I was going to buy one of those. <laughs> And exactly. you know you say that, but I know a lot of I know a lot of people, including Russ Meadows, that had that big one and didn't have any problems out of it. Matter of fact, he sold it to somebody and they didn't have any problems out of it. So, yeah, they, I mean, I think it all depends on the tool. And I'm not just saying that. To uh, you can buy any kind of tool, regardless, and still get what we call a lemon out of it. Okay. There's operator factors too. Yeah, well, what can I say, Ken? You got bad luck. <laughs> well, the last one, the bed, when I got it back, the bed had cracks in it up under where the, the, the bed connects to the legs. They were cracked. I finally had enough. I brought it back. They wouldn't even give me my uh, my uh, warranty money back on it, rat wow. bastard. <laughs> I made them give me the money for the lathe back, though. <laughs> no, I, I don't know a lot of people that's had that. Anyway, back to... Uh, that I'm glad you're getting started on it, but I will warn you one thing, Becky. It is a rabbit hole. And you <laughs> to go down into that rabbit hole and be prepared because the next thing you know, you're going to go like, oh, man, I need this over here to make this, and I need this, and I need this jet of jaws, but, oh, I need this. Over oh, yeah, you can get caught up in it and spend a lot of money. So, And where that rabbit hole is going to start is you have to get an eight, EPI uh, adapter to fit all the chucks. Yeah. <laughs> That's the first thing you're going to discover. None of the chucks will fit directly. You got to get that adapter. Yeah. Uh, uh, now, got all these, all uh, small one. It's a great unit. I swear by it. So. Yeah, you got one, right, Chris? Yep. Yeah. See, Chris has I got one. Too. Well, so. What'd you say, Katie? Before we leave Becky, uh, go away from Becky, she posted. Uh, a video of her her grandson and her helping him make his first little table. That is the coolest little video, and that kid is just doing great and uh, and, and it's wonderful. If you, uh, yeah, you know that that reminds me. There ought to be a contest that everybody does a video with a kid. The kid doing the project, you guiding them through it. That'd be a yeah. good idea. So, if there was a contest, yeah, I I haven't got any. Nephews and nieces young enough, but I borrow one of the neighborhood kids. Boy, that really started wrong. So. 
this is the words are coming out. I couldn't stop myself. I, I, uh, I we, un- <laughs> we understood what you meant. Uh, so, so, uh, the approximate cost, but I will say that all the accessories for the lathe, as Russ mentioned, is very expensive. It's an addicting, yeah. costly habit, yeah. for lack of a better word. But I don't oh. know what the, the unit, those mini lathes cost at Harbor Freight. They're only uh, they're less uh, less than two hundred dollars. Two hundred bucks. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. How much would you think a little piece of metal like this would cost? I can get twenty five bucks. <laughs> yeah, twenty five, thirty bucks. It's crazy. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> now, see, on the other hand, if you three D printed that, it'd probably cost you fifty cents. Yeah, yeah, but you fall yeah. apart on my lathe. I guarantee it. Yeah, Tolerance. Yeah, three D printed one ain't gonna hold up. <laughs> hey, there's, there's people that are printing. 3D printers, guys. They're printing. <laughs> I understand that. And then you talk about the tools. Yeah. yeah, it goes on and on. That's why I say it becomes a rabbit hole because then you go like, well, I need, you got to have a chuck. Then you'll realize, well, you need different jaws for the chuck because they don't come. I mean, it depends on which one you have, but not necessarily they come with all the jaws. Then you need the different turning tools, a bowl gouge, a... A, a scraper, a this, a that. I mean, it just goes on and on oh. and on. As my, my then funny then you get tired of resetting the chucks. So you get another chuck to keep one with the cold plate on you, another one with the jaws <laughs> on it. Yep. <laughs> it, just, it gets, you just, the next thing you know, you're in to, you bought, okay, here it is. The next thing you know, you've bought a, let's say you spent $200 for a lathe and you got $500 worth of crap to go with <laughs> I've got I've got five lathe chucks, yep. so I don't have to switch lathe chucks. But I've got like ten different jaws. And I just showed you all my tools up there. Like three or three or four of them I made, but the other ones I bought. Yep. Now it's, it's a all rabbit right, hole. Can you, just, you can make a twenty-five dollar pole. We we just decided to go ahead and let you go next, since you just won't shut up about your. <laughs> Well, thanks, Russ. I, I know you're always there to beat my ego down. So. <laughs> no, but anyway, since you were already on the lay stuff, and uh, Ken has a brand spanking new Laguna Revo. Oh, what is, yeah, that's beautiful, man. 1836, two horsepower, 220. Bolt. Uh, I went down to Woodcraft. I, I wasn't meaning to uh, buy it. I walked in and the owner's daughter was there and she talked me into it. So um, it's pretty cool. It's kind of like going from uh, with my Grizzly from like the Flintstones to Star Trek. Yeah, I mean, yeah, I now is, would that. you compare the Grizzly t- to the Harbor Freight, the one that you had? Was, that, was it similar to the one that Harbor Freight sells? It, it is similar. The only thing I don't like about the Harbor Freight one, besides it, it caught fire on me, I, yeah, I'll admit I'm pretty rough on my tools. I am, okay? But uh, the motor is in front of the head here. The head stuff. Hold on a second. Let me switch the cameras back a little better. For you. Um, on the Harbor Freight, the motor is on the front right here of the head stock. And you can't your the bowls you do are limited because of that it'll tell you you can do this size bowl but you really can't do that size bowl but the grizzly is on the back side so it's it's about three hundred dollars more but you also get a four-year warranty on it everything parts belts one of my belt went bad two years after i had it they sent me a new belt for free my bearings went bad. They sent me new bearings, and I did the bearings because I put a big old hunk of wood on there and didn't put the stale tail stock there. So, but uh, this thing right here, let me let me uh, show you guys the uh, the controls on it. That's what that's that's the selling point to me. Well, it's not only that. You showed the controls the other day uh, when you sh- showed that little video of it making noise, not making any noise, and the other the grizzly like raising hell. Uh huh. <laughs> I mean, right here, look, you got the uh, on off buttons there. You got forward and back. You got this right here, which the speedometer, you can. Can you hear it? 
No, it's real quiet. That's yeah. super quiet. That's so, amazing. And then if I want to go to a lower speed, you can put, bring it right down there and change the belts. I love this thing. I'm telling you. Wow. I'm in the tail stock too. Look at, look at this, look at this thing. Look at a giant bullet. Love it. But alas, I am broke now, and I have to eat ramen for the next couple of weeks. So. <laughs> <laughs> Does Missy McCord know how easy you really are when it comes to talking to women? Oh yes, yeah, you know. <laughs> <laughs> now, one thing I did notice on that that I'd really like is some of the tail stocks and stuff will fit onto your uh, tail stock, or your stuff of your tail stock will fit onto your tail stock. You have room for them. That's pretty nice. Yeah, there's a little uh, there's a little little thing here to put your stuff in. So I've got my little logo marker that I burn into the wood, and I got the tail spur, the live center. Yeah, the, that's what I was meant. The live center, and yeah, I freak. Sometimes I forget the num name of all that crap. It's like you can't see it, but right back here, there's these arms that you bolt on that come with it. That are bolt. You can I can put a camera on there, or I can put. They have a light, but the light's like 150 bucks, so I haven't bought it yet. Now that is belt driven. You have to change belts on it. This is belt driven. Yes. Yes. Okay. So, but that's all right. I mean, my grizzly was belt driven. Right. There's some advantages uh, to belt driven. Yeah. Is correct? Is that right? Yeah. It, it, the belt driven versus the it, not. It, it goes wrong. It's not. <laughs> not. <laughs> you have to have belt driven if you're going to have a variable speed. Not. <laughs> oh boy what can of worms did i just open <laughs> uh, actually, you know, there is a lathe out there that is not very uh belt driven that is totally uh and you can change the speed and it has a d uh digital variable motor whatever you want to call it and that's the nova i believe yeah. that's the one you have right <laughs> yes I don't the one know. I have. who happens to have a nova <laughs> yeah i have the nova and it's uh it you don't have no belts. It's totally a digital motor. You have a control that you can. Uh, it's a variable speed, but it's it's a digital variable speed. The variable speed is like the grizzly that has the 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 thing that you uh, the knot or the lever that you go back and forth on. And what that does is it has two little it has the pulleys that are up there, and they'll go wider or closer together to to bring the the belt tighter and out further to cause it to go a lot faster. Right. right? So you can't have a, a true variable speed without a belt. You can have right. a digital one with or without a belt. So, uh, along with some of the avenues of the digital, with the Nova is the braking capability. Um, since it is a true digital motor, it uses magnetism, in other words, to run and change the variations of speed. Uh, it uh, when it goes to brake, because I was worried about that um, about using the brake, you know. Some of these motors that have breaker brakes on them, like when you release, they actually have brakes that slow the thing down. Not in the Nova lathe case. It actually reverses the current of the motor, which puts drag on the motor to slow it down. So that's the brake. So uh, when I asked the, it was at the Tampa Woodworking Show, one of the engineers that helped design things on the Nova, I was talking to him about the braking. I said, I don't want to use the brake all the time. But it's really nice because it's, if you're working with a big bowl and you stop turn or stop the lathe, it takes forever for that thing to slow down. And he goes, use that brake on the Nova all you want. It's um, magnetically controlled. It can't wear out. It doesn't hurt anything. It'll last as long as the motor lasts. So I thought, wow, wow, that's really pretty, pretty cool. Is I that will a, I'm sorry. Is that a digital motor or DC motor? Um, digital. Oh, it's it's a digital. Control. Yeah, it. It digitally controlled motor. So, in no. other words, it doesn't have any belts or nothing. Uh, yeah. And you just punch in the, well, it's not actually punch in, but you just, uh, it's got some presets. Like I can hit number one and it'll go to 250, or I can hit it number one twice and it'll go to 500 and it just moves on up. But this also got an up and down um, arrow on it where you can change the speed up and down. It's also got a, a knob on it. Where you Reset. can dial the speed in any, like, yeah, within like 
if I wanted to turn something at 1,251 RPMs, I can actually set it at 1,251 RPMs. That's how uh, much control I have over it. Mine comes with a remote control that turns it off and on and sets it. Yeah, my, I've got a remote control on mine, so I can. A remote control for a lathe four. That's like having a remote control to your cell phone. Okay. And, and people that? do have remote controls for their cell phone. It's called a. a, a yeah. uh, Where the remote oh. control. All right, you won't <laughs> let me finish here. Where the remote control comes in handy is is that my headstock rotates, so it's set over the uh, bed rails but it'll rotate 90 degrees out to the side. And then I have a, um, what do they call it? An outrigger arm for the rest that comes around and meets it. So even though mine's an 1824, so it'll do 18 inch bowls over the bed. I, when I swing it around, I can actually do a 36 inch bowl off the side. Okay. Mm -hmm. With the outrigger and where the, remote control comes in is once you put a bowl on there that's 36 inches in diameter you don't want to reach around behind the bowl to try to change the speeds and turn it off and on for fear of catching your arm on the bowl you can turn the remote control turn it on and off and set the different speed i see you do a 36 inch bowl <laughs> oh i ain't even a, a uh a, trust me, a uh, 12 or 14 inch bowl scares the That's hell out of me. So I ain't doing that. I've been working on this one for two years now because it yeah. terrified me on that Grizzly. And it's only about 14 inches across. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> That's yeah I ain't doing spinning. those 36 inch bowl. I mean, they, they each, don't get me wrong, a Laguna is a damn good lathe. Oh. I don't, I don't have anything. They are. I don't yeah, know they're why. fantastic lays. Uh, they are a lot of good lays. I just happen to want the Nova, and um, uh, Daryl Jones got me interested in the Nova. He had the Nova Comet, but anyway, so, and I got one. My lathe, uh, the uh, Nova, um, what did I just say it was, the 1824 or whatever, uh, was regularly $3,600. Yeah, that's what that lathe ran when it was sold. I got it for uh, $1,600, and it was brand spanking new, That's never been new. used. So you, I got you got, this one, the drive on it is off of, a, off of a burial frequency drive in the back. It's a step down because it's 220. It right. steps down to, because this is actually a, a three-phase motor that I'm using. What uh, would this? Huh? I just heard somebody else say something. I just wanted to ask a question. Uh, that that remote control you have, uh, is that the is that the one that you can actually set your tool on the tool rest and have it turn gouging while you're while you're sitting in the house eating <laughs> salad? That's actually, no. <laughs> actually they uh, Nova actually makes a tool handle that has the remote control built into it. Oh, come on now. Okay. I knew you were going to say that, and I'm glad you did. Give me a few seconds. I'll be right. Let's, uh, Matt, I tell you what, you said you have or wanting to get a lathe or have a lathe? Yeah, I, I recently got a used lathe. Well, you talk about your lathe, and I'll go get my stuff. Awesome. It's a Rikon. It's a mini lathe, but it has the bed extension on it. And I have all kinds of accoutrements for it. It came with a lot of stuff. Oh, wow. uh, boxes of stuff. I'm, I've yet to dig through it all. And I have a lot of the kits, too. Say, say again? Video or it doesn't count. I know. I know. <laughs> I I'll have to get on, on that. Yeah. It also came with a bunch of like pen kits and bottle stopper kits and and a whole bunch of things like that. The pen press, I have pen press too. I don't, okay. I'm really yeah, excited about it. Handy. You can make your own pen wine with your pen press, right? I bought a pen kit two years ago and it's sitting up in a box up there. I've never used it. I'll tell you, I do have a question though with the pen kits. How can you tell if the actual nib is gonna jiggle like <laughs> like, do they make like pen kits where, I mean, nothing irritates me more when I go to write and there's play 
in in the tip. Um, it's all about how much you spend on that pen kit, I'm sure. <laughs> Uh, okay, I just I didn't know if that was a thing or if that's just something. Well, that was just like a cheapy, like you know, giveaway type thing. But just... I got I got a question. Uh, it doesn't concern any of that, but every time the uh, and I don't know if anybody else sees this, but me. But whenever the camera is on Ken Moon. It uh, it shows me that uh, Matt Hoss has got a got a uh, spotlight on him. Really? Any of y'all see that? No. Whenever, whenever, see, and look, I oh. see it now. When he moves, when the camera's on Ken Moon, that spot on his shirt is right over Matt Hoss, and looked like we're spotlighting Matt. Boy, he's got oh. the camera on him and everything. That's it's neat. <laughs> So, uh, okay, so it's just an artifact of the video. Yes, yes, yes. Is that it? <laughs> Mushrooms? No? Uh oh, <laughs> No psilocybin for you? Can I have some of what, you know? <laughs> oh, <laughs> Lord. Lord. Yeah, Nobody Matt, but me. Matt's going to want some. <laughs> <laughs> All right, what have y'all gotten into while I was gone? Oh, uh, we uh, we were cleared of all charges. You don't want to know, but they're going to shut you down, so don't worry about it. <laughs> Talking about you mushrooms, you, you can't prove nothing. I leave for two minutes, and every, every time you give it over to me, it goes off the rails. I, you know, uh, it goes guilty. to hell in a handbasket. <laughs> discussing some type of cartel. Okay, so this is, I wear this around my neck, have a lanyard. This is the. Uh, actual remote control mm. for the uh, DVR. Does that say open beer? <laughs> open what? Beer. If it does, Chris will have it next week. Open the <laughs> beer says, it says off, on, up, down. DVR. <laughs> okay. Uh, I, I you can turn it off. That's what the DVR is. Is you can turn it, turn it up and I can't get up. You can turn it off. You can turn it on. You can adjust the speed up and down with the remote control. And I call, I call my son when I can't get up. A tool handle that you can change. Uh, actually, you can change the inserts on this so it'll accept different diameters of tool tools to go uh, in here. And the tool handle is not only a remote control, but it also has a light on it. Wow. Well, they seen you coming. <laughs> <laughs> so I can turn the lathe on and off and adjust the speed up and down while I am actually turning with this handle. I think Russ thought it was a Star Wars lightsaber. Oh, yeah, lightsaber? Right. <laughs> <laughs> Russ, you're killing me here, man. <laughs> I like the flashlight on there. I've actually uh, thought about buying one of the ones with the flashlight on there. Well, your Laguna ain't got jack crap on my <laughs> Nova, okay? Wait until you grow up. you still watching. This is what we mean by it's rabbit hole. Hey, so Rob, anyway, sponsorship <laughs> Laguna. Anyway, it comes with the uh, handle that is totally... Your, under your wings there before you start talking trash about my wings. <laughs> <laughs> It comes with a remote control tool handle also, so you ain't got that on your uh, Laguna. <laughs> well, oh, here we go. Hey, you thought I, you thought I, really, Russ Meadows, you thought I was lying I did. You, giving you a line of BS? <laughs> I did. I thought you were wow. calling BS. What's Ken coming back with? I got a couple of things up there. Oh, my God. He's got it. <laughs> I'm not sure if you'll be able to turn these, but I got a few for you. Okay. <laughs> wow. I think, are you coming to the Charlotte Woodworking Show this year? Uh, yeah, you're talking about next year into or in October, the um, uh, Kling Sport Extravaganza? Well, they just had the Kling Sport one. They have the, uh, I guess it's next year, the, uh, the, the, uh, the, uh, the Atlanta Woodworking Show, they got one up, the same exact thing going up in Charlotte this next year. Oh, okay. No, I, I will be. No, go ahead. Spore is in uh, Clingspore is in October of this year. They just did it. Up now, there in, uh, last Hampton. year. It's again this year. That's what I'm saying. They just did it. Last month they had one. 
I was talking to to, to uh, what's his face, and I was going to at or to to Nashville, and he said, "Hey, stop by. We're having the big extravaganza up there." I thought they only did it in October, November of every year. I don't know. He said he was doing it. Oh, I think we'll check into that because, if my understanding, the Clingsport Extravaganza is in October of every year. Well, I'll be there. Yeah, I, mean, I, I know I'll be there. Look at that. It got all moldy. Wow. All right, so uh, Katie, you said you didn't have a tool, and uh, Chris, do you have anything you want to talk about? Oh yeah, there you go. You're on mute, by the way. You muted yourself. I didn't do it to you. You I, did it to yourself. No, I, I did it. I got a cough. I didn't want to be on the screen when I did it. Anyways, I've been wanting a pin nailer, and I, I like cordless tools because I trip over cords. I trip over air hoses. So cordless is my friends, and the only cordless pin nail out there was the Ryobi. I gotta tell you, I'm pretty happy with that. I've only used it on a couple of small projects so far. Of course, they'd be small projects, a pin nail. But um, I'm pretty impressed with it. Um, Shane had one, Shane Cole, so that's why I got the idea. I I forget what I paid for it. It was under a hundred bucks. I know that. So. Um, yeah, I think they actually ran at one time. They had them on sale for eighty nine. Yeah, I think that's what it was, oh, something like that. So, bad. so, and the other one I got is uh, something that uh, Russ put out a couple weeks back. A little video of the little dust buster, a little dust blower. Yeah, that's this pretty thing nice. Works great. It cleaned off the, all my tool tops, all my bench props in like second. Blasted around. I guess it's meant for. Clean out computers and keyboards, but it's got some pretty good power to it. I don't have it plugged in right now, but they cleared off the uh, top you of the table saw like in like a blink of an eye. So, Hold it up where I can see it. I, I didn't uh, see it. That's all. That's all it is to it, huh? That's all it yeah. is to it. Uh, actually, uh, uh, Seiko sells them. Is it? Okay. It's a DataVac electric tester. I did a little video on it, but I haven't released that yet either. So. <laughs> Yeah, it's it's actually works very. Steve Good has one. He's the one that I found out about it, and um, they actually work very very well. Yeah, I was I was amazed how quickly they clean the tops off and the bench and the uh, tabletop. Yeah. And um, the only downside is it just it just blows. So you make sure you're facing out the door or out the window, because it just blows the dust in the air. Then, so yeah. Yeah, it's not a vacuum. It's uh, it's it's no, it's a blow. Right. For, the, uh, for as small as it is, have has a heck of a lot of power. Yeah, I was, that's what I was amazed. It was in the on position when I plugged it in, and the the power that just blasted out of that thing shocked me. I didn't expect that much power. So wow, I'm gonna have to get one. Yeah. I need. But the thing that I'm really liking, I, I'm trying to get away from Ryobi and, and work with the wall, but this was the only option for a cordless pin nail. Yeah, I actually have thought about getting that same exactly one you've got. Uh, Green Bay Wacky says he has two compressors and uses air nailers and staplers. I don't mind the hoses. Actually, a cheap tool shop brand from Menards. Some states don't have Menards. Yeah, we don't have uh, Menards here in Florida. So I know some states have them. I've got the uh, issue of roaming around a uh, 10 by 20 shop. I don't need hoses and compressors lying around the floor. So I already got... I don't have enough room in here as it is. Okay. Yeah. Uh, Donna Presley's out there in the chat. Hey, Donna, how you doing? I hope uh, how your uh, brother's doing. I hope he's doing better. Uh, she says, I got the one Steve talked about a year or so ago. I love it. She's talking about the same one you've got, uh, yeah. Chris. Yeah. Uh, a road may make some good tools. I'll talk about my little tools that I bought or had uh, uh, got here late, lately i'm just looking back but i'm glad uh i'm glad that donna's back out in the chat i've been missing her and glad to see her back out there uh mccain woodcrafts uh he's kind of new how you doing glad you're out there uh let's go back real quick and just before i go over there to brenda and uh see i got it right that time uh <laughs> uh ken mccrory's out there Inspired Woodworks, Bexy, Becky's Texas Wood Shop, um, Tracy Keaton, Dave Hart, they're out there in the chat. Tom Spillane, Inspired Woodworks, uh, Jim Bashirs is out there in the chat with us. Uh, just going back through and 
seeing who's out there and I appreciate y'all being out there very, very much. Uh, Brenda, do you have any, uh, well, I don't have any power tools to talk about, but I do want to talk about a project real quick. If it's okay. Sure. Go ahead. That's okay. Cool. Um, I thought I'd bring this up. I made this the other day. This is a little pencil cup that I made and I made this out of the Sawdusto that uh, Shelly Cole came up with a recipe for. Yep. And I wanted to mention this because her challenge ends on July the 1st. And uh, so there's a few more days if anybody wants to enter her challenge to make something out of her Sawdusto recipe where you make the glue and you mix the sawdust up in it. And um, this was just a little project that I came up with because I can always use pencil holders and stuff for my desk. But I put little Sawdusto embellishments around the, the little cup. Cool. And so that, nice. that was my little claim to fame that I wanted to talk about tonight. <laughs> No, it looks great. It really does. I'd like to say hey to some of my friends out there in the chat. Cab7 and Lulu Love You and Green Bay Wacky dropped in this evening to the chat. And so I wanted to say hey to all of them out there. Hey, y'all. <laughs> hey, y'all. Hey, y'all. Glad y'all stopped by and seen us. <laughs> okay, I got a couple of cool tools. Uh, we'll talk about the first one, about Ryobi stuff. You know, I've had a Ryobi drill now for over I know it's been over a year, probably close to two years and uh, 18 volt. And it has been fantastic. My only complaint is it's really hard to like, if you're going through steel or something to get the bit tightened down into it, where, um, uh, where it won't slip. I have a real, my, I guess my hands are kind of getting kind of arthritis C or older and they don't want to tighten down. Now my, I love my rigid, cordless 12 volt because it has like a clutch on it and it actually when you pull down on it in the opposite direction you can hear it go click 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 and it'll get really tight i wish the rigid or the uh, ryobi had that because that's my only complaint it's got plenty of power it's worked fantastic other than i have a hard time with my hands getting the bit uh not so much wood bits because you're not putting a lot of stress but if you're going through metal you got to have that bit really tight in there or it'll want to spin and when you catch if it catches and so that's my only complaint about that well lo and behold around father's day ryobi had a special <laughs> and that was this and that was if you bought this pack which was the battery charger and two of the big batteries with a little case cool looking little case i haven't even taken it out but a cool looking little case. So, but if you bought this, you got to pick a tool for free. So, well, here's, you come with the, the big ones. These are the big three. Three amp hours. Yeah, three amp hours. Now, yeah. this is what came with this new kit. This is what came with my drill originally. So you can tell the difference. Yeah, it's one and a half amp hours probably. Right. Yeah, and then this has the cool little to tell you if it's fully charged or not. So that's pretty cool or whatever. And it comes with this nice charger with that. Now, that was $99, the two batteries and the charger. Well, I chose the saw. Oh, look at there. For my free tool. So, And I got to tell you, I have been really, really happy. Um, I've cut a couple of things with this. The battery goes in on this side here, uh, like this. You can tell oh, I used it. That's a side mount. Mine's a little different. Mine's in the butt. No, um, this was a side mount. Oh, cool. Uh, and then. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, 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 don't say it. What did you say, Chris? Uh, hey, yep. somebody mute him. Yes, somebody mute him. <laughs> You can't say anything around him without making him making something ugly out of it. So anyway, so uh, yeah, I'm I'm really happy with this. It uh, it, um, so uh, I cut through a while back. I need to cut a piece of pressure pressure treated tuba six. Actually, I need to make two or three cuts and a piece of pressure treated tuba six. And was uh, really shocked. It's got a safety thing on here. You can pull the trigger all day long. And it won't uh, won't go. You have a have to push this in and pull pull the trigger to make it go. So, but anyway, it cut through a piece of pressure treated two by six, 
like hot butter. I didn't have any problems. So I was very, very happy with the power. I didn't buy this to be um, for me to, you know, construct a whole house with it or put up a wall or anything of this. I bought it simply for the fact that I, sometimes you want to cut something and you don't want to run out of an extension cord and this will do it. That's what yep. this is for. You know, I don't want to have to run back, get my DeWalt big mm -hmm. uh, power saw, run a cord out and everything else. I can walk in, grab this, take it out there and How cut it. it Russ? Huh? How much have you used it so far? I've, I've used it like three times. Uh, the most I put underneath it was a, a, P, a tube of six pressure treated. We cut about three or four pieces off of it and it cut through it like hot butter. We cut a piece of half inch plywood, four foot wide uh, with it. It went through it without any problem whatsoever. And I cut a piece of, what was it? Oh, a, a two before up. Uh, I cut a piece, two, two, two pieces of two before off of a, like a spruce two before and it didn't have any problems. Okay, I've been thinking about buying a cordless one because I'll, I'll, I'll go ahead and admit it now. I've cut three cords on my circular saws on accident. <laughs> I, I got one and it's still I, cut. I've cut my through my circular saw cord. Yeah. So I, I've been thinking about one of those so I can, uh, but I, I, I just haven't heard like uh, the battery life and the power and all that. I, I don't heard. know about the battery, but I mean, it's got three amper hours, and that's a big battery. So, and you get two of them with that kit. And I don't, they don't have the sale on right now. It was only during Father's Day. But if you bought the two batteries and the charger for $99, you got the saw. You could pick the saw, a drill, and one more thing. And I don't remember what the, oh, the, I don't remember. It was the saw, the drill, and one else. You could pick any one of those three tools for free uh, if you bought the, uh, Two batteries and a charger, so yeah, I really chose the saw. Good specials like that, some mix and match and some combos. They're really good about right. mixing your it up. Son's back behind you. <laughs> you started, the you started off for a minute there. <laughs> yeah, I, thought, I thought he was going to strip for us. Yeah, yeah that's I thought that's he probably just put his belt back on. <laughs> but anyway, so I, uh, you know, I'm very happy with it. I'll have to use it for a while. But the drill, which is an 18 volt drill. I've had for two years now, and it is powerful. I've used it a bunch, a tons of times. Uh, the only problem, like I can say, and I, it might be part of my problem, is it's a keyless chuck. And I, if I'm using a, me, a bit to cut through metal, I just can't seem to get the uh, squeeze the bit hard enough um, to keep it from the, if it gets in a bind, from slipping. Now, I, I got the that. same problem with my hands because I got arthritis in both sets of thumbs yeah. and I just can't crank down on them like that. Yeah. Uh, it would do the same thing to me. Now, my son grabs a hold of it and goes, <laughs> and he don't have any problem. <laughs> but I have a hard time with it. But now I will say this about the, uh, the uh, rigid, but I've had the rigid for years and years and years, is that the rigid is really easy, even with our, my hands to crank down because it's got some kind of clutch system that when you turn it backwards you can hear it go click 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 and it'll click and it doesn't give so it's a lot easier to work with the other thing that i have and you know it's true it is very so very true i don't care how old you are if you sit there and tell me you don't learn something every once in a while from somebody you're lying out your teeth uh, I consider myself fairly smart, but I have learned something and I've used chainsaws my entire life and did not know this, but I'll tell you what it is in a second. But my other thing was, is my father's day present was a brand new chainsaw. It, um, my, I think you're, they call them Poland, 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 I don't want to say yeah. that. Poland. Uh, it, it, I had it for years. I flat just wore it out. Uh, so I was looking around for a chainsaw Sears, um, had them on sale. The Sears craftsman. Ooh, uh, wow. Still around? Yeah. On sale for, uh, <laughs> had their, their, them on sale. And plus with my Sears rewards card, I got, I, I ended up, this is like a, uh, almost a $300 saw. I got it for $139. Nice. Cool. Yeah. So it's a 20 inch blade, uh, 50 CC, I think motor uh so i used it the other day to cut that uh log in, into 
uh, I can still smell the camphor. On the, <laughs> yeah, on the saw. Huh? I said, like I told you on Facebook, when are you going to send me the other half of that log? <laughs> I'm not. <laughs> I'm going to turn it into something. But anyway, uh, mine was a 16 inch. I went up to the 20 inch because I want to be able to cut bigger logs. But and so I used it the other day on that log and it cut great. But there was a problem with it. Uh, it didn't cut so great as I would have thought it would have. Now, uh, it wasn't the saw. It wasn't me. I learned something. So that's just wanted to show you this. this is what I got it. It's fantastic. I mean, I love it. And I've had a lot of Craftsman tools, so I'm not going to use this all the time. But let me explain to you what I found out was. The <laughs> chain on that saw is a cross-cut chain. Okay? I'm like, okay. Do, what the do they make that? rip chains and cross-cut chains? Yes, they do. And well, I did not know. Who would have thought? Who knew? I did not know that. I have cut trees down upon trees upon trees my entire life. Matter of fact, I've had people call me over uh, because I'm pretty good at laying. I cut a tree down that was within five foot of my house and was overhanging my house uh, that a tree company come out and told me they wanted $1,200 to remove it because it was hanging over my house. I cut it down and laid it out in my front yard by myself and never touched my house. So, All right, hold on. Aren't all chains cross-cut chains? Like, isn't every cutting operation a cross-cut well, operation? All right. Let me explain something to you. Okay. When you buy a chainsaw, like I just went into Sears and bought this, or if you go buy a, a Poland or a Poland or whatever you want to say that, that, or most of these chainsaws, for home use and for cutting logs, they are mostly for us, like we're using, and they're cross-cut chains. In other words, they're designed to cut the tree off across the grain of the wood, not with the grain of the wood. So they're cross-cut chains. So you cut logs up into pieces, five and six foot, because you're doing cross-cuts. Well, the other day when I needed to split that log in two, I was cutting down through the center of it to make two halves. That's along the grain. That thing didn't cut very good at all. I was thinking like, wow, anytime I've ever cut uh, trees with a brand new chainsaw and a brand new blade, it went like, because I was cutting with the grain, I need a ripping chainsaw blade. Who knows? Oh, tooth chain. Huh? It's called a skip tooth. I don't know what you call it. It's called a ripping chain because here's uh, when I put I put it on Instagram, and somebody came back and said that you're struggling with or whatever, and I was, and I was like embarrassed because I'm thinking like, wow, I know my chainsaw has been broke for a year, and I just got this one. Did I forget how to use a damn chainsaw? And then whenever I got through, somebody put on and said, it's not that. You're using it to cut through along the grain of the wood. You need a ripping chain. Well, you know these sawmills where they you see them, that they have actually a bracket where you can put along the log and you put the chainsaw on its side and you cut down the whole length of the... Uh, Did they my release last week? Well, what they sell is a ripping chainsaw blade that is actually designed to cut the through that as a ripping blade and not a cross-cut blade. I did not know this. <laughs> That's what I, I, for when I'm doing my milling on my Alaskan chainsaw mill, it, I use nothing but skip to. Okay. On the down a tree, I've got like, like, I think 15 different cha or chains, my chainsaw. Uh, and I got like five regular ones and I've got 10 that are skipped to just because when you're, when, even when you're doing that, I can only get like three slabs out of a log before I have to switch out chains or sharpen my chain. So. Oh, and one of the things that, uh, James Parker said, and I hate to correct people, but James Parker said, if you laid it on its side, it'll cut better bull crap. <laughs> I cut the same. All right, I got two logs exactly the same as from the same tree uh, Daryl gave me, right? So I cut the first one standing up, and it didn't go so well. So I laid the second one on its side, which I didn't video, and cut through it. It had the same problem. And if you think about it, if it's laying on its side or it's laying on the end, it doesn't matter you're cutting with the grain. It don't matter if it's laying on its side or the top or the bottom or whatever. 
I think he was being sarcastic, Russ. <laughs> yeah, because it it doesn't it didn't make a difference when I cut I the saw. slow. But it had made no difference whatsoever. It cut the same slow way. But then when I started looking at, I went online and ty typed in cross cut chainsaw blade. Boom! Uh -huh. It popped up. And then I pulled up the rut, and then I started reading about them. And there's a definite difference in the blades. Uh, now, I don't know. I didn't read anything about a skip tooth blade, Ken. So I don't know where you're coming well, up with that. That's what, that's what a ripping blade is. It's, it's a ripping blade. Yeah. Okay. I've heard, I've, heard it, I've heard it called that. Okay. Yeah. So, all right. Skip tooth ripping blade. So, but yeah, it. Uh, that's what I found out. Okay. See, uh, Robert Crow from Mo, uh, my friend. He he does a lot of lot of wood stuff, and he just post, posted in here. He said, "Russ, it's eleven degree for ripping. Cross is a thirty degree. See, it's the angle of the teeth. That's what I that's what I thought. So, thank you, Robert. I appreciate that. In other words, um, it's a much steeper degree for the uh, ripping than it is for the. Uh, and Russ, I'm with you. Putting it down on the side is harder to cut a log if yeah. you're ripping it." If you already noticed, like when I do any any of my videos and I'm ripping it, I've got it at an angle to help. Now, I can't put a big old nine foot log up and down. So I put it at much of an angle as I can and let the saw use the nursery or the gravity yeah. down. So. Yeah. Now, it doesn't change the structure of the wood. Think about it. Okay. This is a log. We're, we're fingers, thinking about it, Russ. We're thinking yeah, about my, it. My finger is a log. The grain this is, is my thinking face. Up and down this way of the log, okay? It's running this way. So when you're cross-cutting, you're cutting across the grain and taking it off. Now, when you're going to cut it in half, it doesn't matter if you stick it up and cut it this way or if you put it on its side and cut it this way, you're still cutting the length of the grain, whether it's laying on its side or standing up. And... The difference is the blade, and it wasn't until I posted that on to Instagram when a couple of two, th and I, I was not uh, sarcastic when I read I was like, wow, I just learned something. I never knew that, and I'm glad those guys on Instagram wow. came back and told me that is because I would have never known that, and so now I'm going to buy a, uh, a cross-cut blade, and like uh, Ken said, I'm going to have a couple of blades of each type, so that way, if I'm going to do cross-cutting, I'll do cross-cutting. If I'm going to do the uh, other, I'll get the skip tooth or whatever. Uh, so. That would explain uh, the reason that th these chainsaw carvers have multiple right. uh, chainsaws. Yes. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> yeah, they have, they don't change blades. They have multiple chainsaws with the yes. blades, so to speak. I mean, you, you got the same concept on a table saw. Yeah. If, yes. you're, if you're going to cut a cross grain, you're going to use a 60 tooth uh, or a blade. But if you're going to rip something, you're going to use like a 40 tooth. 40 tooth. Blade. You're exactly right. It makes common sense. But it's just like one of the ladies, too. You yep. know, if How you're, this is an end grain bowl that it's, I went into the end grain. It was a lot harder to cut because it's end grain. So you don't want as many teeth or as many cuts. Right. My point is, is though yeah. my entire life, I've always cut a tree down as a cross cut. I've never had to cut a log. I've never had any need to cut a log in half because I, I didn't start turning until the last two or three, four years. You so. watch Matt Cremona? Yeah, I haven't watched Matt Cremona. I, mean, I watched Matt Cremona, but my point is, is I see you, they don't tell you, oh, by the way, when I rip this log in half this time, I'm changed my blade to a, uh, you know, yeah. they don't tell you that. Hey, in your defense, I did have to contact Matt and say, hey, why the hell ain't I cutting these logs very well? It's really hard to do. He laughed at me. He said, because you're using the wrong blade. You need to skip to. <laughs> yeah. I realized that. So. Well, but that's that's pretty cool. I'm glad. Um, and uh, Robert Crow was out there. He... Uh, <laughs> I appreciate that. That's the I difference. Like that. And, uh, and I, I, I kind of well, thought it was the pitch of the teeth of the blade on there to make a difference. But I'll be buying another uh, different type because I'm, I'm going to end up using this saw to cut trees 
to do cross cutting on regular trees, but I also want it to change the blade on it to do the uh, to split the logs in half. So I'm not doing all in grain stuff. I want to do some cross um, uh, cross grain stuff or whatever. But yeah, um, Russ, I seen you hold that up. I'm going to go to you right now. <laughs> I I have to do it now because they're coming to get it. Okay. Uh, this is a uh, a wall mounted uh, uh, bottle opener. I like it. For, for beer and stuff like that, you stick your bottle in there and cap falls in here. And I made it where the, the uh, has a little catch on it. So the, <laughs> it like opens it. and you nice. can just wipe them out into the trash can. Yep. My, uh, I used the CNC to uh, V carve the name and the little design there. And then also to put the T hole slots on the back. Oh, yeah, yeah. Uh, oh, I see them. Yeah, I see them. Yeah. I did that. And then I used the table saw for the rest of the species and stuff. And um, my daughter-in-law has a particular, uh, I don't know what she does, but she goes on Etsy a lot. And she always wants me to make something off of Etsy for her to give to her mother's <laughs> boyfriend. So this is supposed to have been for Father's Day. And the first one I made, uh, I didn't like that look because using the measurements that they had, it didn't work. And so I made this uh, this part here, the tall part. I made it a little bit taller, and uh, it works perfect now. It's it's the way it should be, I think. And yeah. uh, of course, well, actually, you sure know, the bottle's going to hit the box. Yeah, they said it was supposed to be 11 inches tall, wow. and the the, the 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 box was like four and a half, but I made it uh, 15 inches tall. Yeah. And uh, I kept oh, the box wow. length about the same, huh? It's going to hold a lot of bottle caps. It's going to hold a lot, but they can open up and drop them out. And, well, uh, the 11 inch one is probably just those like little Miller ponies or something. <laughs> not, not <laughs> serious uh, thing. Through, uh, through self promotion, I take the, I took a, a picture of it and showed a lady that uh, I deliver mail to. And uh, she says, I, when you get time, I want one of those. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I got. I'll have time shortly, and so I. That's how I've been doing it. I've been uh, passing it around, and people are liking it. It, it come out pretty nice. Yeah, it looks good. Yeah, yeah it does. Thanks. It looks fantastic. I saw it on there, and I was like, "Yeah, he used his CNC on that." <laughs> I did. I did on the, and I actually used the CNC to uh, uh, for the uh, for the opener to mark the middle of the wood, and I. D touched it with the drill bit to uh, see where they put the screw at. That's cool. Yeah. Where did you, you get, get the opener at, Russ? I got that one at Hobby Lobby, actually. Uh, it cost about $3, but it didn't have the screws with it, so I had to go to the local hardware store. But Amazon has a has a three-pack set that comes with the screws and everything, and that's kind of the rustic uh, farmhouse look. Yeah. Uh, yeah. That's that's what I liked about it, and uh, it's not the uh, the new shiny stuff. It's a rustic look and stuff. So uh, that's why I went with that. It's pretty neat though. Well, I like it. I'll just paint them. They'll be rustic. <laughs> I, I think you should make us all one now, Russ. Yeah. Well, you think so? <laughs> you know, I'm in the business of giving, but not that much. <laughs> uh, but yeah. Uh, uh, several people have said, "Oh, we have like 36. We've had as high as 42, but 36 people watching, only 24. Th wait, well, we just went up to 26 thumbs up. So, yeah, don't forget, everybody. If you don't mind, give me a thumbs up. Sh show me that you like what you're doing, what we are doing here. Uh, Ken and a couple others are out there getting on to people saying, give us a thumb up. Thank you, Ken. And uh, I think Chris was one of them, and there was somebody else. So, James Parker just gave me a bunch of thumbs up by himself." He gave me all by himself. He gave me one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, about 20, 25, something. Like that. I, I quit counting. But if y'all have any more um, uh, inspired woodwork, says my uncle never knew that you could sh uh, sharpen a chainsaw chain. Yes. And I understand that. A lot of people don't know that. I've sharpened my own chains for years, uh, and it's not hard to do, and it's fairly cheap. I actually have a 
a, a chainsaw for my old Poland uh, up up over there on that thing. That it's a guide that shows you and it's the file to to sharpen them with. Hey, speaking of Harbor Freight, their chainsaw sharpener well worth twenty five bucks. Well Is it? Worth. Yes. Okay, so absolutely works perfect. I mean, it, it's hard to screw it up if you ask me, but that, I've been using it for four years now. And you haven't set it on fire yet? No, I haven't set it on fire. Now, what? Hey, for Harbor Freight, to defend Harbor Freight, the only thing I've ever had catch fire is the lathe. Now, I've had their their hand orbital sander go out on me. It was on one of my videos, and I threw it in the trash and got one of those, uh, what did I get? One of the Porter Cable ones, and it works great. So Yeah. Um, no, I've had good luck with Harbor Freight. I've got uh, the drum sander. I've got the the belt sander. Uh, the drum sander, the only problem I have with it is one of the rubber feet on the bottom were missing. So I went down to the store. I was going to return it. And the guy just opened the box and pulled a rubber foot off another one. Gave it to me. <laughs> hey, this work? I said, it works. <laughs> I had the, the, the disc sander with the uh, belt sander on it. I had yep. that for four or five years, and I bought it for 60 bucks. I sold it for 35 so and yep. it was still working strong. So yep. you just got to buy the right equipment there. Uh, the only thing I would stay away from down there at Harbor Freight is the, I call it the soft metal tools, the wrenches, the screwdrivers. Uh, yes. Yeah. yeah. They're gonna yes, they're sir. gonna strip and, and chip real fast. I, I buy I buy all my clamps there. All those little uh, every time I go there, I grab some of these six inch clamps. Yep. Yeah, those are the good. Those are. Huh? Those are not. Those are not too bad. Yeah, those those are fairly good. Yeah, I mean it. it it, you just got to buy the right things. That lathe I bought, I may have just been bad luck with it. Yeah. And like I said, for their defense, I am very rough on my tools. Very, very rough. Yeah. Just wanted uh, to give a shout out to Patrick from Patrick's Workshop. He is out there in the chat. How are you doing, Patrick? Patrick. Good hey, to Patrick. see you out there. He was saying, hey, Donna and fellows on the panel. So he said hi to all y'all. So. Hey, Patrick. Uh, Michelle Marcuz out there in the chat. He's Did Michelle always... ever get his bow? I don't know. Have you heard, Ken? Yeah, yeah, he did. He actually posted it in there uh, earlier in the show that he got it. Oh, okay, cool. I, did, I missed that. Magnificent. Good. I've still got to get his. And here's the other in. one I still haven't finished. My mother has laid claim to this. <laughs> Still be here in a week, so I guess I ought to get working on it, huh? But uh, earlier you talked about uh, chainsaws, well, the chainsaw files, you know, the different sizes. But you know, these long serrated edge butter not uh, bread knives are about worthless for anything in the kitchen. <laughs> that end up out in the shop or, or the garage or wherever doing. As you can take a chainsaw file and actually sharpen them pretty good. Oh, really? Yeah. Yeah, somebody was talking about using a Dremel out there in the, in the chat a second ago. I've seen that. I've seen that happen. I've used a, uh, I had some stuff to cut one time on a bandsaw blade. And uh, and I just had to get it cut and the blade was getting dull. And I went through and took my Dremel and real quick and uh, sharpened the bandsaw blade and was able to finish whatever I was going to cut. And it worked great. Actually, I cut some more stuff. Ordered the blade the next day, but I still continue to cut because when I sh sharpened with the Dremel, I mean, I'm sure that I didn't do a precision job, so to speak, but it got me through. The bad thing about doing that is, though, you know how many teeth on a dead burn 106 inch bandsaw blade? That it's like, yeah, it's like takes you forever to go through and get them all sharpened up but man i've got i just turned around and both of these computers that are sitting over here or because i had that saw up here and was holding it up in the air and i got a fan <laughs> over there are just covered with sawdust i'm serious <laughs> They're just, yeah it's just <laughs> yeah, yeah can y'all see the i can see the rock clear right now <laughs> i know but can you see the sawdust on the computer yeah, <laughs> I mean it's just covered in the in the sawdust. It's like, jeez. I think he wanted to plug his sponsors, sponsors a little more. I saw Rocklear. Yeah, I think I want to. 
But uh, no, I, I, I was just shocked. I just turned around a minute ago and like, holy crap, this one over here is covered slap too with it all of it. I'm going to have to take uh, shut them down and blow them off. Get all the sawdust of them. I didn't realize that whole, that saw, when I held it up, still had so much sawdust on it, it got all over everything. But you're talking, you know, chainsaws and then the, the, the battery operated stuff. Six, eight months ago, I got a little Echo 16 inch battery operated chainsaw. Uh huh. And uh, that, little, that little thing really does a pretty good job. Uh, it's, uh, it's a 58 volt battery on that. And uh, the uh, one issue that I had. Uh, was you really got to make sure that that the tension on that blade stays up, you know, really yeah. tight. But I put an Oregon brand uh, chain on it, and uh, it, it seemed to really make a difference for it. And uh, I was, I've heard you're not the only one that mentioned that. Uh, if anybody out there in the chat or has anybody else had any experience, they say that is Oregon brand chain saw blades are actually the best of the best so that's the reviews that i read you know yeah, that's what that, i read too. you know if there's anybody out there that's got uh, can back it up or have a different opinion or whatever yeah, um, you know, uh, uh robert crow i know you you have you ever heard of the oregon or are they any good i know he does a lot of uh milling and chains and cutting down trees he sent me a bunch of wood for free but then uh, it was later on that uh, Echo uh, or Home Depot had a sale. Later on that uh, I got an Echo. Where's it coming from? Everyone's got the video running in the background. No, I'm muted. I got it muted. Earlier you talked about the chainsaw. Somebody is. It was Ken Moon. Imagine that. It was Ken but, Moon. Uh, Home Depot had a sale on uh, the Echo uh, uh, edge trimmer, you know, weed eater, the string trimmer thing. And I think it was like $179 for the, the trimmer and the battery and another charger. Same, same uh, battery that goes in my chainsaw, the 58 volt. But if you look, the battery is around $169 and yeah. it was $10 more. And I got the, the, the trimmer and another charger and yeah. And, and that little trimmer do, does me fine. Uh, Green Bay wacky said he had a great time, but he's heading out. See you later. Green Bay. Uh, Inspired woodwork said Oregon chains are the best. Uh, Robert Crow said husk chains are I'm not sure what Robert. You're gonna have to redo that again because you got too many type errors on there. I can't. Husqvarna, maybe. No, it said husk or or or, or organ. Or husky it. or organ. I use I use the uh, organ uh, change myself. So <laughs> I use the guy who I'm gonna pay to cut it up for it's, me. It's not organ. It's Oregon. 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 Husky, he said Husky, H U S K. Yeah, Husky as in Husky Marna. Yeah, Husky Marna. Oh, 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 oh. Yeah, so, uh, <laughs> well, I just, uh, when I was reading through some of the stuff about the different types of chainsaw blades, I was also read through some stuff, and a lot of people commented on that uh, the Oregon um, blades were fantastic. So, but uh, Robert says the uh, Husky, which I, I think that's what he means, Husqvarna, uh, those blades. So, yeah, we're fixing to cut out of here. Uh, if, uh, oh, wow, I got 31 thumbs up now. So, wow, y'all got, yep, they got busy out there. So I appreciate that. But, uh, yeah, we're fixing to cut out of here ourselves. So I appreciate everybody out there. And thanks for the information. Like I said, if you ever get into the position where you think you know it all, or you can't learn anymore, you're probably one of the biggest idiots that ever walked the face of the <laughs> earth. Because I, like I said, I consider myself as very knowledgeable over the years as I've learned tons and tons of stuff. 
and I've cut down tons of trees in my lifetime and, uh, and used a chainsaw hundreds upon hundreds of hours in my lifetime to cut down trees. I never knew, I'm 59 years old, I never knew that there was a difference between a uh, blade as far as a cross cut and a ripping blade for a chainsaw. So I, you learn something new. And if it had not been for the guys over on uh, Instagram to bring that up about you're using the wrong blade, you're using a cross cut, I would have never known then uh, because I still didn't know until somebody posted that. And I went back and said, what do you mean? And they, a few of them posted out there. And by the way, uh, just, just to say this, I would just like to say this. Let me check. If you don't mind, while you're there, I'm at 1,991 followers on uh, Instagram. So I'd like to hit 2,000. So I only need like nine more people to get up to 2,000 followers over on Instagram. So I'm over on Instagram. And guess what the name is? Simply Wooden Creations. All one word, Simply Wooden Creations. So, But yeah, if you want to go over there and follow me over there on Instagram. But if it wasn't for those guys, I mean, I would have never known. I'm following you, damn. Oh, well, but so, uh, I, and that's what I said. I, I love it because I learn so much stuff from other people when, and especially like Instagram and Twitter and these other places. They, uh, I, and when somebody, you know, corrects me or says something, Hey, you should be using it. I don't take it personally. I take it or I it's constructive criticism because I learned right. things. So, and I was like, wow. And that started that whole spiral of how, you, um, uh, about the difference in blades and I learned something. So, mm -hmm. all right, guys. Uh, thank. Nope. What was that? Did we lose him? He, he looks oh, like oh, right the end. Oh. Well, guys, we have the show to ourselves now. Yeah. 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 We're still live. Don't say anything about him. All right. Cuban. Our opportunity to destroy the show. He's trying, to, he's trying to take control back over. Oh, no, no, he's he's talking. Over. <laughs> oh, no, guys, he's back. He's well, back. I know that uh, uh, Matt said that he could only be here until uh, till about 9 o'clock. So. <laughs> he doesn't know he froze up. I, I, uh, I, Ross, you froze up for about 20 seconds there. I was frozen up for about 20 seconds. Yeah. Matt we should still be here. <laughs> it's only 8.30 now. Matt should still be here. Yeah. No, 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 no. He he told me he was going to have to leave a little early. I didn't know I froze up. Yes. And we were having a party, too. Well, you well, were. I, I know you all were. I was wondering what the hell was going on. <laughs> it was a complete takeover. <laughs> it was. A total mutiny. All right. We're going to get out of here. There's only one thing that I have left to do. Thank, you, it, for, thank you for all y'all. James Parker, Inspired Woodworks, Robert Crow, Becky's Texas Woodworks, uh, Woodshot, Green Bay Wacky, all y'all that have Tom Spillane that have been out there, Michelle Marcoux, Patrick's Woodshop who have been out there in the chat. Thank you very much. Thank you for all the thumbs up. Just give me sawdust, lots of sawdust all around me and everywhere. I like it flying all around my shop and even in my beard and hair. Good night, everybody. Thank you Thank for you watching. Everybody. God bless. <laughs> Listen to Chris. Right. Good night. Get out of here.